Hello and welcome to Elven Home and to this edition in which uh, I give you the outcome of the question that I asked in the last video and a big thank you to everybody that, uh, that responded but I'll come back to that. I also uh, do a review of a kit that I was sent by Enscenic uh, of a gasometer uh, and uh, you'll see how I got on in building that and what I, what I think of it. Uh, and I show you the start of the work in building the garden square. Uh, but to return to the question that I posed in my last uh, video, which was for the open area by the station, uh, I had a tremendous response, absolutely tremendous response, and I'm really grateful to everybody. And what I'm going to do now is just give you a roll call of the people that responded, and thank you to everybody that responded. And then I'll, we'll go on to the layout and I can talk you through um, the suggestions that was made, uh, but also where that's taken me. So. First of all, here's a fanfare for those who responded to my last video. Okay, so here we are back on the layout. And as you can see, a tremendous amount of um, people replied. I'm really very grateful. Uh, I can tell you that um, by a short neck the most favoured suggestion for going into that gap uh, was a railway hotel. Um, uh, many people suggested just a pub um, but there are two pubs in Bagshot Terrace. Um, a fish and chip shop was suggested and then there's a fish and chip shop in Longbottom Terrace. Uh, police station, and that's absolutely right, we've got to have a police station somewhere. Um, a market square, a bus station was suggested for that, that side. side. Uh, a shop and a cafe, a bank or insurance office. There is a bank, in fact, in Long Bottom Terrace, Swallows Bank. Uh, a petrol station, uh, a dodgy garage, which may link well with the petrol station. Um, a theatre or cinema. A post office was suggested, and that's probably true. Somewhere there should be a post office. One interesting selection was to ha uh, su suggestion was to have a, dod uh, a derelict building of some description, because most of the things are pretty well together and look almost brand new. That's partly because I can't bring myself to weather them to, <laughs> to look old and dirty. But that's an interesting suggestion. I want to think about that, where, where I might put something like that. A station master's house, and that's certainly true where the station master would be living. Uh, a mill was suggested for this area, um, a hospital, or a town hall, and there is a town hall. If you look at uh, the boiler house just behind the um, engine shed, uh, just to the right of the, the, the smokestack, uh, is in fact the town hall. Um, a milk area for the delivery of milk, which was, was quite interesting. Um, but a, one, a, a couple of people said a couple, two things. One, don't rush to fill that space because it will work itself out what it is. Uh, but also think a bit about the sight lines because uh, you have some nice sight lines looking across at the moment. Of course, it's very bare, um, but it would if you fill that, entirely fill that gap, you would obscure the view of the trains pulling out of Weathertop Station. So um, where does that leave me? Well, as you may imagine, this has caused me to think uh, quite a lot. And I think the railway hotel is a good idea. Uh, but also I like the market square idea as well. So that the railway hotel in front of the railway hotel, there might be a market square rather than that being, as I originally had, a kind of access point for the delivery of mail. Uh, and then something approximating uh, a garage. So what I have in mind to do uh, is uh, I've got to finish the design so I'm, I'm taking the don't rush um, uh, seriously but I could see that where the question mark is if I could zoom in a little you can see there's a couple of cars there already where the question mark is I could, would have a, um, a railway hotel that takes up some of that space with a little car park beside it for guests and you can see where the two cars are currently parked, roughly where that, that would be. Um, and then I'm, I'm changing the idea that, that post and everything gets delivered to the right-hand side 
where the two lorries are parked because that's a much easier route for everything to go up and to get down the underpass. Uh, and that access area at the back of the station is really to help with the delivery of anything for the market square that will now go in front of that area. Um, possibly entirely pedestrianised apart from an access road to get guests into the hotel but I'll see I, I, I need to get that clear in the mind um, but of the other ideas that were in there I will put a police station on the site because I think it does need one and I think the space beside the town hall opposite the fire station looks quite good for that I also like the idea of the petrol station um, it wouldn't be very large I think at this stage we're talking late 40s early 50s uh, and I think that may well go down, it's hard to see here, and you're getting a sneak preview of something there too, um, it's hard to see here, but where that building is that's part of the brewery is going to be where the hillside comes down from High Elven. And I think what I'm going to do is put a petrol station down there by the road. So, uh, with that, because um, that's gone on for five minutes already, I'll stop it there because my mind's still going. I'm, I'm, by the next uh, video I'll, I'll have firmed up exactly what it is I'm going to do. Uh, but now to move on to uh, something that you saw already there which is the gasometer that was sent to me by Tom White of N Scenic um, to do a review. So I'll come back right at the end um, just to finish the video off. In response uh, to my last video I was contacted by Tom White who runs N Scenic. Um, who are developing a range of um, card kits uh, and he asked me whether I would be prepared to do a review of their gasometer or gas holder kit depending how you want to describe them. Uh, I said I'd be happy to do that and he has sent me this kit so I've not paid for this kit uh, and I'm just about to start work on doing uh, a review of it. Uh, it's still sealed so I've not taken it out. I have however watched uh, an excellent video that Tom has put up and I'll put a link on the screen now showing him building this kit. So I don't need to do uh, how to build this kit mainly because I haven't built it yet and that would be a rather odd thing to do. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to open this while uh, now so that you can see it as it comes out and what you actually get and then I shall um, come back at various stages just to say how I'm getting on. Um, you may remember that I built a gasometer from Modelux, which uh, their website doesn't seem to be working at all now and their Facebook page hasn't had anything from the company on it for quite a while. So I'm not sure they're still, they're still running. Um, that took some perseverance. It, was, it, was a, it required a lot of very fine work. So I'm interested to see how this one goes together, having watched Tom's uh, video of him building it. And interestingly, in Facebook in the last couple of days, I've seen one or two posts of other people that have built this and have had uh, a good reaction to doing it. So I'm looking forward to building this. Um, I've uh, downloaded the uh, instructions. Um, now I should say before we do anything more, you don't get this in the packet. There is uh, on the website where the item is when you buy it, there's a PDF you can download, which is what I did. And because I use Adobe Reader DC, which is free from Adobe, um, uh, which is I think just replaced their normal reader. Um, one of the options for printing out is to print it out as a booklet which is what has happened here. So this doesn't come in the kit, this is something I've done uh, but I am quite impressed already by the um, clear, what look to be very clear instructions. I've obviously read through this uh, and the images and I think with this and the video um, that's all um, very helpful in knowing how this sort of thing goes together and it's just a case of taking your time and, uh, and starting work. So what I will do, let's just open the packet and get those pieces out and then I'll start working and cut everything out um, and I'll come back once I've done that so I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me cut cards out. I'll just remove this. What I'm covering over is a discount code because I'm sure Tom would be very pleased if I gave all his non-customers are the discount code. Um, so this is just the packet. Uh, as you can see it's just a very thin card which is going to be formed to make the, uh, the gasometer. I'll just take them out 
and then I'll start work cutting them out but I won't do that on camera so I think there are meant to be three cards let's have a look move that so we've got this card as obviously the things that help you form the gasometer and some of the uh, side supports this has the two halves of the lattice work uh, that surrounds the gasometer with more of the side supports and these pieces which are textured on this side as you can see uh, form the holder itself so the thing for me to do is to go and release the bits that I need to do the first piece of work and essentially as from what I've seen on the video um, there's sort of three or four phases the first is to create the lattice work that surrounds the um, gas holder uh, and then um, the second is to do is to create the bottom half of the gas holder the third is the top and then you put it all together and you have your model so I'll come back in just a moment when I've um, got all these pieces out of the card. Okay, well, I've completed cutting out all the pieces. Very straightforward, as you might expect. Uh, they're held on in a number of places by little pips, which have to be cut through. Uh, you will need a fine blade to do that. I think uh, my um, craft knife uses size 11 blades. Uh, on his video, Tom uses um, a razor blade, a one-edged razor blade. Uh, and you will need something as uh, as thin as that to help you cut the pieces out but they all came out very easily so the uh, laser cutting of the card is um, is very accurate as far as I can tell uh, and this has all come out exactly as it's intended uh, and you see I've got the instructions propped up there and I'm following them at the same time and they are taking me through step by step a complete idiot's guide which is probably just what I need so what I'm going to do now is start building um, I'll let the leave the camera rolling um, and I may use some of the clips uh, um, I'll see see what they look like because it can get very tedious watching somebody uh, working on something but what I have to do now you'll see these are the lattices um, which is the out the ironwork that uh, uh, holds the gas holder and these have to be gently bent to begin to form a semicircle which is then stuck to the outside of this ring. Uh, and so you do one half first of all, uh, then you do the second half. Uh, and what I will do is I will complete that part of the work before I come back and talk to you again. Okay, well, I've completed that part. Uh, my phone is now telling me it's on low battery, so it needs to be recharged. So I'm gonna take a little bit of break and try and get some of this glue off my fingers from where I had Gloomageddon. Uh, I'm really impressed with this kit so far, I have to say. It's going together, as you might expect, it's a really nice size. It's much bigger, uh, I'll show it when I finish, than the Modelux one, and I think it's going to look really good on the layout. So, uh, I've, I've got up to um, step five, I think I've completed now, of how many steps altogether. Let's have a look. Step five of ten, so I, I should therefore be about halfway through the process. So the next thing to do, I think, is to start fitting the... There's a ring, I think, goes around the middle and uh, one at the top. Uh, and then we start on the uh, gas holder itself. Right, so the next bit, now that I've got my phone charged back up, is to fit these two rings together. They need to overlap by about a millimetre each side. Fit the rings into position. This ring, fit the top ring, and then start work on the gas holder itself. So I'll just carry on doing that and I'll come back once I've completed the gas holder. Okay, well here you can see the completed uh, gasometer, um, which looks very good, I must say. It looks really impressive. Uh, you really wouldn't need to do too much more by way of weathering to this. It, it looks fine. Um, I've, I've, it's taken me a bit longer than I expected, but that's because I've been fighting my glue which normally grabs instantly, but it was taking the devil's own job to set. Uh, so that's taken me a bit longer. Uh, it is a kit that demands attention and some dexterity, particularly when you start fe feeding the cage uh, around the, I uh, can't remember, 16-sided uh, rings. 
because that uh, you, you need to be able to manipulate things quite a bit and also when you're fitting these card uh, pieces of card around the rings to form the gasometers uh, top and bottom um, and one thing I didn't do well enough was to bend the card. You remember there were straight pieces of card which you obviously fit together uh, using a piece of card to, to join them. But you really do need to give them a good bend so that they form tightly round the ring. Because otherwise it can be quite tricky getting the ring to, to, to go inside if, you haven't, if it won't bend properly around it. But I overcame all of that. Uh, and it's gone together very well and I'm very pleased with it. So uh, definite thumbs up and thanks very much to Tom for asking me to do the review which I which I'm, was happy to do. Um, I don't think there's any downsides to this kit as far as I'm concerned other than it is one that does require attention uh, and some dexterity. So if you're not very nimble with your hands you would I think find this quite a challenge. But that apart uh, that's the end of this section and uh, we'll move on uh, to the next section where I start work on the garden for the end of the row of terraces. For this section I'm going to be talking about the piece of work that I'm going to start doing today uh, and we'll see how far I get before the video goes up because uh, this may take a little while to do uh, which is to work out how the garden square that's going to sit at the end of the terraces uh, is going to be designed. Um, what I have here, if I bring it up to the camera better, is my original thoughts about how the um, garden might look. So the enclosed square is here. Uh, and as you see, I got terribly uh, arty and did these winding paths, but I'm not, I'm not sure about those. I think those, they are quite likely to change, uh, which would have some kind of... Uh, uh, play park in the centre and then bushes or trees and greenery just to try and give a bit of green at the end of the section where you've got the two long rows of terraces. Uh, there would be a tarmac path either side with bushes uh, to form the ends and this would all be contained within railings so there'd be railings around here uh, a square railing here with gates coming in from either side and railings around here to uh, maybe not railings along the front. I'll see, see how I go. So that was the idea. The first piece, which I think I showed at the last one, is just to cut out what looks is, I think, one or two millimetre, one millimetre probably, um, plastic hard, uh, which, is the, which is on which I will be building everything, um, just to give me uh, a start. I'm going to be using the Scale Scenes Model Scenery um, park railings. Uh, that's just to give you an idea of the basic park railings. I've actually got two sets of each and this is another set which includes gates so I can make up my mind how big a gate, uh, one or two gates, that I want on the uh, park entry. Um, the gates will only be from the top ends. Uh, I'm not going to have gates on, at the sides because it just gets... I think that would be too much. It's quite a small square, really, in, in proportionate size. Model Rail Scotland was last weekend, and in Model Rail Scotland I bought my children's playground uh, set. It's a white metal kit, uh, which you can see is all in its bits. So this afternoon's work is to start... Um, well, some of it is gluing it together. Uh, but on for the others, I've actually got some figures in here, because it's really about time people started appearing. Uh, so I'm going to have a first go at painting uh, and of course I would pick ch figures of children. Uh, so <laughs> painting figures of children in Engage is probably the most complex you can do. So if I can pull that off I think I can move on to some adults thereafter. So this afternoon's work is to um, get the, this playground partly because I want to see once I've got all these pieces put together how much space they take up and whether all of them will go into here or whether I'll just do a selection because I could easily see that you might have a swing and a slide perhaps uh, and then the roundabout and the seesaw will have to go somewhere else. But what the first thing to do is to get everything uh, made and then I can uh, get on to painting them in whatever colours I want to do. 
So I'll come back once I've uh, completed making these uh, and I'll take a view at that point whether I'm going to be able to do more before the video goes up. Okay, well, uh, we're the following day now and I've managed uh, to complete the very straightforward assembly of uh, the pieces and to paint them and I'm quite content with the way they've come out. They look quite jolly. And I also had a go at painting the figures, uh, which is something that I don't intend to repeat soon um, because, there you go, uh, this is very detailed fiddly work. Um, I quite enjoyed it, I suppose, um, but it's not the kind of thing I'd want to spend myself doing. I'd had some idea of getting, oops, those packs of 100 uh, figures that you then paint up for yourself. Well, I'm forgetting that idea straight away. Um, but there you are, it's, uh, if I just bring that back into focus, there we go. Um, it was a useful thing to do and I might do it if I need to get a kit with very specific types of um, people in it, but otherwise I think I'm going to look for alternatives to uh, secure people to populate um, Weathertop and uh, High Oven. This is as far as I'm going to take this in this video. Um, it's been very helpful now that I've seen the pieces and how big they are in relation to the size. I think I'm probably going to lose the seesaw because uh, I think I can arrange the other three so they don't take up too much space um, in what would be, I think, a central hard standing area. Uh, I don't think in this period of history that children were given the comfort of bark chippings. Um, <laughs> more likely the encouragement not to fall off because it will hurt. So um, I'm, I've got to go back and think again about the design of this, uh, which I need to give some time to. But I will record the development of this because I hope to have it completed and on the layout in time for uh, the next video. OK, well, that just about wraps it up for this edition of, uh, of Elven Home. Um, just to mention that the buildings you can see in front of you, the row of houses at the back of the two rows, they were completed, so all the houses have been done now. I'm finished doing gutters and downpipes, uh, which was a blessing. Uh, but that works really well, that process, so I will certainly be using it again. Um, but this next time, as I build things, I think I will put the gutters and downpipes on. Um, I've been doing a bit of scenic work around the station. You can see that area of grey, which is some card that I put down to butt up against the cobbles, and then I've painted it a charcoal grey. Um, and that is on the edge of the board that can be lifted off. So I'm going to need to be able to separate that because there's no point carding over the whole thing. So there'll be more scenic work done in that area. And obviously I'll be working on the town square, the little market square as well, a uh, little garden square. And thinking about the design of the railway hotel, which I think I will, I'm going to set in as a sort of a mid-Victorian style, um, not too florid. Uh, a bit more ornamentation than Georgian, which would be wrong because the railways obviously really don't get going and building and certainly didn't arrive at Weathertop until about 1850. Uh, so that's got my mind thinking on that and also the design for what will go in front of the railway hotel. Um, if you have any comments, please do leave them. Um, I really enjoy getting the comments. They've been so helpful. And as you've seen, the comments from the last video have already uh, got my mind thinking of designs for other parts of the, the layout. Uh, if you've liked the video, please do give it a thumbs up. That's really very helpful. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed, well, please do subscribe and hit the bell notification so you know when I'm uh, uploading. But until I speak to you again, bye-bye. <laughs>